New setup. What's going on guys? Greg here. Welcome back to the channel. So you guys immediately see a whole bunch of camera equipment and this video is not going to be anything car related because we actually have some very exciting news. In my last video, we hit 7,000 subscribers to my channel. I am so, so grateful for all the new subscribers, for all the existing subscribers, all the likes, all the comments, and the followers on Instagram. The traction over the past few months has been incredible. And I want to bring you guys the best content, the best quality video and audio that I can possibly give you. The only way I was able to make this all possible is because of you guys. I've been able to invest in a whole new professional camera setup. So right now is going to be hopefully my last video that I'm recording in its entirety on an iPhone 13 Pro. This camera right here was also my backup camera that I've been using for some videos, but I've actually been pretty disappointed with the video quality and especially the audio quality. So this right here is the Insta360 one RS. I bought this primarily because of the different lenses that it has. So this one is the 4K super wide angle capable lens. And the other one that they give you is the full 360 view lens. I use it a handful of times to do that RC car look 360 cam with the pole sticking out the back of the car. It just sways way too much when you're driving the car. So I have to figure out another setup but to use this for vlogging purposes actually was not all that great. So this I'll be keeping as a backup, but the iPhone I think definitely has to go and that's why I'm replacing it with all of this. All Sony branded products with the exception of some of the accessories and obviously the SD card here. And we're gonna go through everything that I purchased and I'm gonna show you what every item is going to be used for and some basic features of each one. I am not a Sony or any digital camera professional whatsoever. I know the basics. I've been YouTubing for over a decade. I know how to use a camera, but to use the features and to maximize and master what this camera can do, I will probably never be able to do that. Honestly, it would take me a lifetime to master this camera and to become like, let's say a professional photographer or a professional videographer. Taking the photo is one thing, but the post production, the editing, the lighting, the color grading, that's a whole different skill set. My skills with Adobe Premiere Pro and Lightroom are going to have to take off. I'm gonna do a lot of education on that in my free time and I'm gonna try to learn as much as I can with both using the hardware and the software. We're gonna kick it off with the body, Sony Alpha 7 M4. So this is the fourth generation seven series Alpha. And if you guys don't know what this is, it's basically the hybrid between the 7S and the 7R. So the 7S is more geared towards people who do a lot more video. So as a result, the pictures have a smaller resolution and uh, I think it's only like 12 megapixels. And then the other side for photographers is the 61 or 62 megapixel 7R4, which is, is out right now. And that one does pretty decent video. They, they both can do 4K. However, the screen doesn't flip out like this on the 7R. Most part I'll be using 4K 24 and 4K 30, which is perfect for vlogging and the videos that I do. Let's go to the lenses. I would say hands down, one of the best wide angle lenses that you can buy for the Sony full frame camera. This is a, a 16 to 35 millimeter, 2.8, a G Master model lens. Taking it out of the box, it comes in this really nice pouch and carrying case you can call it i'm probably not gonna be using this because i'm gonna buy a big backpack which can hold all my lenses and the body the charger the battery all in one backpack here is the lens so 16 to 35 comes with 
the hood, which comes off very easily. I've put it on before. Comes with a lens cap, which I will be keeping on for the time that I own this. I'm going to be buying filters, um, polarizers, and also probably NDs that I will put on here and that will keep that glass clean and scratch free. And then I'll probably keep this on the filter. I think it should work um, so that the glass on there also doesn't get scratched up. So this is one very expensive piece of metal. It's very solid construction. It feels, it feels pretty heavy. I would say this weighs a pound, maybe a little bit more than a pound. But the reason why I bought this lens, um, not only is it rated as the number one best lens for that camera, being that it's a 1635, it's going to capture everything that I needed to for vlogging purposes. So that 16 is a super wide angle. I don't really need any wider than that. And I'm probably going to keep it around 20 for most of my vlogging purposes. Next piece, this is the Sony FV85 with the F1.8. This is not a G Master model lens, and I bought this one specifically for that reason. So I've done a good amount of reviews. Um, while I was in Mexico last week, I was watching literally review, video reviews of that camera, this lens, that lens, the microphones, and they say that the 1.8 is actually better at one thing versus the 85 1.4. And that's the video autofocus. And because I'm going to be doing mostly video with this camera setup, I figured I would just go with this. I also have the 28 to 70 lens that comes with the camera. It's basically a kit lens. On its own, it sells for around, I think, $400, but if you buy it with the body, it's only like an extra 150 bucks or 200 bucks or something like that. So why not? This gives me a lot of range, 28 to 70, which the 1635 barely covers, and obviously this one doesn't cover. So this is going to be a great in-between lens. It comes nicely packaged. I, I took it out and I put it back. Um, but obviously you get the bubble wrap, you get a lot of wrapping, protecting. So here's the 85. Just like the other lens, comes with two caps, one for the glass, one for the mounting. Keep these on all the time, you don't want dust getting in. And it comes with a nice hood. You just put it on just like that. You put it on, you match up the red dots, and then you turn clockwise to put the hood on. And then to take it off, just turn it the other way and it pops right off. The next thing I need to do is buy filters for all three of these lenses because I want to protect the glass on here. And also the polarizer is an absolute must for getting rid of a lot of that glare that you see on like car windshields and on surfaces of water, you get that glare from the sun. So it's like your sunglasses, polarizer. Same exact thing, it gets rid of the glare so that you can have a better image and see better. Last lens, we gotta start moving because this video is gonna take forever if I don't. So white generic box, this is a kit lens so it doesn't come in a nice fancy Sony box. Instead, they give you a generic white box. And I took this out and I've actually taken several pictures with this already. And uh, I've been using this lens to learn all the settings on the camera thus far. So again, comes with a hood, two lens caps. And honestly, for a couple hundred bucks, like this lens feels really solid. It's got good weight to it. It doesn't feel cheap at all. So I'm not gonna knock on this. It's the first three pictures I've taken with this camera because I want to make sure that this was brand new. So I took a couple pictures and I went to my shutter count website and it indeed had zero shutter count prior to my ownership. So it is a brand new camera. Next, let's talk microphones. Why do I have so many microphones? Well, 
here's a story. I bought these on Amazon while I was on my trip in Mexico because the way microphones work, there's directions, right? Most road shotgun mics face forward towards the subject on the camera. So when I'm vlogging and I'm showing you something on my car, let's say I'm holding the camera like this, right? And this is a part on my car that I'm trying to show. If I'm talking into it, the microphone is facing this way and it's picking up audio coming this way because it's a directional mic. It's not gonna pick up my voice speaking into the camera, but as soon as I turn the camera around and face it towards me, I become the subject of the microphone and now it's gonna pick up really good audio. So these mics pick up audio from multiple directions. It depends on the setting that you have it on. So on this one specifically, it has a switch, front, rear, and then front plus rear. So that means it has a mic facing you, facing me, and I can flip a switch and it will decide if it's going to pick up audio coming from you, coming from me, or coming from both sides. Now, the reason why most shotgun mics only pick up audio from forward and to the sides is because it doesn't want to pick up maybe background noise from the person holding the camera. So let's say like I'm filming a movie and uh, you know I got the microphone facing that way and there's actors over there talking. They don't want to hear me in the background <sighs> breathing or making any other noise or whatever's behind me making noise. For vlogging, front and rear mic is definitely good to have. So this one's made by Movo. The, they come with uh, the furry windscreen and also the foam windscreens. So that would greatly help block out any wind noise or hopefully handling noise. Then the other one is made by this company called Didi, or Didi, however you guys want to say it. It's the same exact price as the Movo one, $50. And it does the same exact thing. No batteries, plug straight into the camera has a switch to pick up audio from front, the rear, or both. And also comes with dead cat, furry windscreens. So uh, they both had pretty good reviews and they're both the same price. So I'm gonna try them both and see if one is better than another. Then here's the big boy mic. Not really a big mic, just like $350 big boy mic. So this is a factory Sony ECM B1M microphone. The reason why this one is so special is because it uses the Sony multi-interface, which is specific to the 7.4 and the 7R4, that in the hot shoe, it has these little sensors or contacts that match up to the bottom of the hot shoe on the mic. Now let me take this out and I can try and demonstrate it to you because I already took this out before. They make another version that's $250 and instead of eight microphones on this top here, there is only four. So this one, same thing, also picks up audio from the front or from the front and rear but there's no wires needed for this microphone. All the audio transmits directly from the bottom of here to the contacts on the top of the shoe. And that eliminates any wires that I need and it powers this directly from the camera. And you can control the audio level with this. And then it has filters too. So if you have like a buzzing noise in the background, like let's say the dishwasher is running or you have um, like a generator in the background that's humming away, you could turn on the filter and it will cut out that unwanted background noise, which is pretty good to have. There it is. This one also comes with a fuzzy cover that it just slides right over and it looks kind of like that. 
and you just stick it on the camera. So let's see if I can actually figure this out or not. Okay, so we loosened it, now we put it on, and now we lock it. And that's it. That's what it would look like. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, so it's definitely connected because I'm just tapping the microphone and I can see that the audio channel on the bottom there is raising in volume. So hopefully after spending 350 bucks on a little microphone for this camera, that it's gonna destroy the competition. So we'll see. Maybe I'll do a review on it at a later time. We have ProGrade SD card. It's a 128 gigabyte UHS-2 VH90 SD card. This camera takes two SD cards. It also has a full-size HDMI port. And I can use this camera to stream onto my computer as a webcam, which is sick. So if I'm working on my computer and I wanna film myself for another video explaining something, I can just set this up on a tripod and stream video from this directly to my camera and use, I can even use it as a webcam. The other cool thing is if I wanna shoot vertically, I can have the screen like this, just facing down, and I can angle it like this, so I can look at the picture without going like this, and I can aim it down low and still see the picture, and then just shoot. And I actually saw an Instagram reel of a guy filming a car on the highway who was sitting in the trunk, and he was just holding the camera like this, and he took a million photos and I'm sure he just went through the best ones and edited those. So it's going to be good for reels because everything is in vertical for reels and YouTube shorts. So that is why this camera, best decision I've ever made as far as uh, investing into camera gear. I've never owned a Sony before. I've never owned a camera that was this expensive. I've never owned a lens that was that expensive. The camera itself, the lens itself costs more than my computer. And I use my computer for hours on a daily basis. So, and the computer helps make me money. It gives me a job. So that tool has paid itself off a hundred times plus more. That's it on the camera. The last little thing I have here, it's nothing major. It's just screen protector for the screen on the camera. Um, it's a nine harness, block side UV, it's anti-static, ultra thin, and resists fingerprints. It's just cheap insurance. It's, this was like five bucks. It comes with two of them. It's a glass protector. So it's basically tempered like you would put on a phone. Knowing me, I'll end up scratching the screen. So it's just better to get something like this and be safe than sorry. But that is it guys. I know that was a really long video, completely unrelated to cars, but I, I was obligated to make a video like this because it's a huge investment for this channel. Thank you all again for supporting this channel and being able to make this happen. So now I'm gonna give you way higher quality videos um, hopefully I will get my skills on Premiere Pro down pat pretty quickly so that I can also do great editing for the videos. But we are still on our way up. Next big goal, 10,000 subscribers would be absolutely mind blowing. And that's really it guys. I hope you enjoyed this explanation of all the new camera gear. If you like this video, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next one, not on an iPhone.